Hello friends, welcome to Technique. This is Normal here, and in this video, we're gonna do a detailed review of the new Oppo F90. So Oppo announced uh, three devices under the F19 series, the F19 Pro Plus, which is a 5G device, and then we have the uh, F19 Pro, which is not a 5G device, but again, uh, uh, priced uh, similar to the F19 Pro Plus. And we have the cheaper variant, the F19, which is priced below the 20,000 price segment in India. Now this device comes with the Snapdragon 662 chipset, it has an AMOLED display, in-display fingerprint scanner, uh, 48 megapixel cameras, then uh, you get a large 5000 mAh capacity battery in a very small and sleek form factor. So those are some of the highlights of uh, the Oppo F19. So how good is this device, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So we'll be analyzing all the aspects and see how good the device is for the price segment it is being offered. So before getting into the video, if this is your first time on this channel, do hit that red subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to get notified of all the videos we publish. So let's begin. So let's begin the review with the design and build quality. Now one of the things uh, good about the Oppo F19 has to be the design. Uh, so when we think about uh, smartphones with larger capacity battery, especially 5000 mAh, uh, what we uh, generally consider is that uh, the device will be bulky and uh, thicker. But here you can see that Oppo has maintained uh, very less uh, uh, thickness and uh, it's uh, lightweight as well. It's very compact form factor. That's one of the good things about this device. So uh, Oppo has done a really good job in maintaining uh, the design aesthetics and you can see it's a very uh, lightweight and slim design and uh, even with 5000 mAh capacity battery Oppo has been able to maintain a good balance in terms of thickness and weight. Now uh, you can also see that uh, we have a punch hole display in the front panel. The bezels are kind of okayish, not the best out there but still for a price segment. Uh, below 20,000 it's quite acceptable now the back panel has a plastic or polycarbonate material uh, with a pattern or other uh, gradient one now uh, you can see that uh, even though it's a polycarbonate it's a fingerprint magnet you can see a lot of fingerprint and smudges getting on the back panel so you have to clean this uh, quite often now the build quality definitely looks quite okay and you can also see the Oppo branding and the camera layout. It's definitely a good looking device out there in terms of design and build quality is quite okay. So even with rough usage we haven't seen any sort of scratches happening so the build quality feels quite okay although it's not any glass build. Next moving on to the display. Now you get a AMOLED display here. Uh, we have a full HD AMOLED display. Now you don't get a higher refresh rate. This is just a standard a 60 hertz refresh rate. But again one thing what is stand out is the display quality the AMOLED panel actually feels quite good you can see that uh, the sharpness levels and uh, the details uh, the the black uh, levels of the AMOLED panel looks really good the viewing angles are again are really good the brightness levels are impressive and overall touch response also feels very smooth and uh, the display quality is definitely good on this price segment but again uh, something what is missing is higher refresh rate this is just a standard refresh rate included now moving on to the software. So this device comes with uh, Oppo's Color OS uh, and we have the Color OS version 11.1 .1 on top of Android 11 and you get 6 GB RAM and 128 GB storage. Now if you look at the software, one of the things uh, about good about the Oppo's Color OS is uh, how refined this UI is and it offers a plethora of options. Uh, you can uh, see the customizations available, face uh, unlock, uh, fingerprint scanner and uh, we have a lot of convenience tool including navigation gestures uh, screenshot screen recording assistive board split screen a lot of options are there so it's a very uh, feature rich ui in terms of uh, options being offered and uh, uh, you can also see that uh, the response is pretty good it's a solid ui and one of the good uh, uis uh, which has been refined over a period of time and with color os 11 uh, this ui feels very smooth as well so we do not see any sort of issues here so next moving on to the performance so this device is powered by the qualcomm snapdragon 662 chip and uh, you get 6 gigabyte ram and 128 gigabyte uh, internal storage now qualcomm snapdragon 662 at almost 19k price segment that's definitely not the one we expect it's it's not the processor for this price segment it's around the 10 to 12k price segment we have seen a lot of devices with the, with the 662 so 662 is uh, kind of underpowered for this price segment so oppo should have gone with a better uh, processor now so uh, because the chipset is not a powerful one uh, gaming on this device is kind of average you can't get uh, a really great uh, gaming experience but uh, you do get a decent performance all around. There is no lags absolutely. Uh, we could uh, see that uh, the performance is quite okay although it's not a powerful chipset and uh, not the value for money chipset for this price segment. The performance was quite okay. 
Now you get an in-display fingerprint scanner on this device, so similar to other Oppo devices with uh, the AMOLED display, you get an in-display in fingerprint scanner which is very fast and there is also face and lock included. Now this also comes with uh, uh, the Volti, uh, dual Volti support, voice over Wi-Fi, so all those features are included. It's a 4G device, it's not a 5G device, so uh, Snapdragon 662 uh, supports only 4G. Now moving on to the cameras. So we have a triple camera setup. We have a 48 megapixel primary camera, 2 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth sensor is included. Now one of the uh, features missing on the camera is the ultra wide angle lens. Now ultra wide is kind of a standard feature on most of the devices and uh, skipping the ultra wide might not be the best option uh, here because uh, most devices in this price segment do come with ultra wide angle sensor. You also get a 16 megapixel selfie camera. Now let's talk about some of the camera samples we are taken. So here you can see that the camera came out quite well. There is good amount of details, decent color quality, sharpness levels are also quite okay. So uh, for the price segment, it may not be the best out there, but it provides a decent experience altogether. And uh, you also get a macro sensor. Now looking at the low light performance, you can see that it's not the best out there. Uh, it, it was uh, kind of noisy even with the night mode, but night mode does uh, help, help a bit. But overall we feel uh, the low light experience is in that great uh, in this price segment. So it should have been better and the overall selfie quality was quite okay. Now moving on to the battery. So this device comes with a massive 5000 mAh capacity battery in this very small form factor and you also get a 33 watt fast charging. Now the battery life is very good on this device, it can uh, last more than a day easily with uh, normal usage, uh, you can get like one and a half days of battery life easily on this device. So that's one of the good things about uh, this device. So now summing up, how good is the Oppo F90? So if you look at the, the Oppo F19, it has a good uh, design, one of the strong points, very lightweight even with the 5000 mAh capacity battery. Then you get a good display, uh, good software experience and decent set of cameras and uh, also good battery life. Where the Oppo F19 uh, uh, lets you down is the gaming experience which is kind of average, the processor is not the best out there and low light performance is not again great. So overall at the price segment of also almost 19,000, Oppo F19 isn't the value for money device out there, but if you want an AMOLED display uh, with in-display fingerprint scanner, good design, uh, then uh, this is a decent offering, but again, not the best value for money device out there. So that is a detailed review of the Oppo F19. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do hit that like button and also hit the subscribe button for more videos. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in our next video. Have a great day.